Hey, how you doing? Uh, today I'm going to be reading from John chapter 16, verses 20 through 23. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy. That a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. This one kind of strikes a little close to me today. Because uh, right now, me and my wife, any moment, uh, are expecting another child. And it's funny because before I came down here and, and read this scripture today, uh, she was telling me that's exactly how she feels. Um... Not that she's in labor right now, but that she, she, part of her is, you know, hesitant, you know, she doesn't want to have the baby because she knows the pain. Uh, but at the same time, she knows that once she has the baby, uh, she'll be overjoyed because of the new life in the world and the baby and, and everything. You know, it, it's hard it's hard sometimes to be a Christian because, you know, we, we live this life, we live in this world where it just seems like sometimes the world has nothing better to do than to dogpile on you and to shove your face and shove things in your face, you know, and sometimes you just, you get tired of fighting maybe. And you just want to go to with, go with the flow, you know. And maybe I shouldn't go to church this weekend, you know. There's that thing I want to see or that thing I want to do. You know, maybe I shouldn't put so much in the plate because there's that thing I want to get. You know, our culture. You know, I live in I live in uh, Middle America, and you know, I there's just so much with media just. Uh, and the culture that I live in is just get what you can get, take what you can take, you know, don't worry about others. And Christianity calls us to give and to love and to serve. And our culture is like, take care of number one, you know. You know, and, and when you walk through the life and, and you live as a Christian, sometimes you get funny looks and sometimes people will speak out and sometimes people will try to beat you down emotionally and even sometimes physically maybe because you're standing in opposite of what the world is and you know as a Christian I would never look to someone and tell them that they are wrong it, I don't feel it's my job to judge However, if somebody asked my point of view, and we'd be like, well, I'm a Christian, and from my point of view, I think about this, about that. Um, you know, um, I, I, I don't want to judge, but at the same time, you know, I, I do pray a lot. I pray a lot for the people that I meet and that I see, because I love them. Even, even the people who... <laughs> <laughs> got me off in traffic, or, or the guys sometimes, you know, the guys that I work with, you know, I, I see them partaking in, in culture that things that I don't necessarily agree with, but I know deep down that, you know, their children have gone too, you know, they belong in God's heaven as well, and so I pray for them, and I pray for myself to stay strong and, and to continually submit to God's will. You know, I've never, ever 
given money to a homeless person and then felt like, man, that was the stupidest thing ever to do. I've never helped someone who is in need and walked away and felt like, you know, wow, that was the stupidest thing to do. So, yeah, while sometimes I may feel beat down by the world and I feel persecuted because I've chosen to live the, the life, to try to live the life as a Christian, you know, when I actually do live it and I fulfill it, I feel pretty gosh darn good. <laughs> you know, and and I'll tell you, I'm not perfect. Every day, I heard somebody say one time, you know, even the holiest of men sin seven times a day. I fail every day, in little ways, and sometimes really big ways. God's always there, He's always waiting for me. Yeah, I don't know what position you're in right now where you're at with God. Uh, maybe you have a deep relationship. That's awesome. Go deeper. It only gets better. Read more. Learn more. Spend time in silence with God. It's amazing. Maybe you're on the, maybe you're on the fringe. Maybe you're the person that shows up and goes to church on Sunday, but then you know the other six days of the week, yeah, it's something else. I've been there, I've done that. Go deeper still. Wedge out an extra five minutes. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like working out. It's, you know, um, when I decided to, that I wanted to try to start getting healthy again, I just worked out for like five, ten minutes. And I did that for a couple of weeks. And the first couple of days were a little rough. But then after it got easier, it was like, okay, I'm going to go deeper. Same thing with your spiritual life. You know, if you're just a little bit spiritual, go a little bit deeper. Maybe you don't have a spiritual life at all. Man. In some ways, I envy you. Not because you get to do all this really cool stuff that Christians don't get to do. I envy you because there's just so much available to you. The hardest part is getting started. Life is waiting. God is waiting. He has so much to offer you. I know sometimes it's easy to just jump from pleasure to pleasure. But there's something about being a Christian and living a life and having a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's just wow. You know, jumping pleasure to pleasure, you know, you eat that cheeseburger or you go do that fun thing and then it's like as soon as the you're done doing it the pleasure's over and you gotta find something else to make you happy I find with, with my spirituality even after I stop praying the rest of my day is so much better I'm so much happier you know when I go to church I come out of church I'm happy it doesn't stop that happiness keeps going. It's the difference between happiness and pleasure. So, if you don't have a spiritual life at all, I invite you. To start with prayer. Ask God where He wants you to go. He will answer. Not in some big booming voice. But He will answer. And you have to be quiet as well. So, um, that's all i got to say about that.